Now in the previous lab, we upgraded the operating system of the 5406 switch, which we're gonna configure as a router later. So our network infrastructure has been configured where the switches are configured in VLAN 1 with the IP addresses shown here. So as an example, Edge 3 has an IP address of 10.0.0.103. Now let's introduce some additional hosts to the topology. At the moment, all the devices are in VLAN 1. So this PC on the left hand side is the PC that I'm currently using to record the videos. So it's also connected to the topology and I'm using this PC to telnet to the devices. So as an example, opening up a CMD prompt and typing the command ipconfig, you can see that the IP address is 10.0.0.249. And once again, I could ping the 5406 and telnet to that switch. Notice once again, 5406ZL, and I can log into the switch, which we're gonna configure as a router. Now these PCs are all in VLAN 1 at the moment. So notice PC1 over here has an IP address of 10.0.0.252. So here's my PC. I've got a VNC connection open to this PC, which just allows me to remotely control the PC. If I type the command ipconfig, you can see the IP address is 10.0.0.252. And once again, I could, for instance, telnet to the 5406 from that PC. So once again, IP config 252. So that's the device up here. I also have two additional PCs. PC2 is connected to Edge 1 on port 24 and PC3 is connected to Edge 3 on port 24. So looking at PC2, typing the command ipconfig, you can see the IP address is 10.0.0.250 and this device could also telnet to the 5406 and log in. On the last PC, PC3, Typing ipconfig, you can see the IP address is 251. And once again, I could telnet to the 5406. And there's the IP address once again. So, PC1 is connected to the 5406 on port A5. PC2 on edge 1, port 24. PC3 on Edge 3, port 24, and the local machine that we're using to record is connected to the Cisco router, which also has a built-in switch. So we have full connectivity in our network. The problem with this setup, however, is that anyone can connect to anyone. And as discussed, you might not necessarily want that. So let's put the devices into separate VLANs and see how it affects connectivity. So we're going to change the topology as follows. The switches and the Cisco router are going to remain in VLAN 1. The machine that we're recording with will also remain in VLAN 1. So VLAN 1 is going to be our management VLAN. So the IP addresses of the HP devices are going to be once again 100, 101, 102 and 103 and they're going to be in VLAN 1 with a subnet of 10.0.0.24. PC1 we're going to put into VLAN 2. Now once again, a VLAN is a separate broadcast domain or separate subnet. So that device has to be put in a separate subnet. In this case, it's going to be 10.0.2.0.24. PC2 is going to be put into VLAN 10 subnet 10.0.10.0.24 PC3 is going to be put into VLAN 20 and its subnet is going to become 10.0.20.0.24 So each of those PCs is going to be put into a separate VLAN hence the subnets need to change. 
Now just to prove that VLANs work, I'm going to connect to PC1 through VNC. So here's PC1, and as you can see, typing the command ipconfig shows me that the address is 10.0.0.252. Now before I change the IP address of this PC, I'm going to set up a continuous ping from my local machine. So IP address 10.0.0.249. So ping 10.0.0.0.252 and make this a continuous ping. So as you can see, the ping is continuing. Let me telnet to the 5406. Typing the command show interface brief shows me that ports A1, A2 and A3 are up as well as A5. This PC is connected to A5 on our 5406. Notice what happens now. I'm going to type conf t VLAN2 to create VLAN2. And then I'm going to specify the command untagged. And I'm going to specify A5 to put port A5 into VLAN2. Notice as soon as I do that, the pings start timing out. Our recording device, which is in VLAN 1, is no longer able to ping this device. You can also see here that the VNC connection is timing out. Even though this device still has an IP address of 10.0.0.252, we're not able to ping that address because it's in a different VLAN. I'm going to go into VLAN 1 and then type untagged A5 to put that port back into VLAN 1. Notice the pings immediately succeed because these two devices are now in the same VLAN. Once again, VLAN 2, put that device into VLAN 2. Notice because the port is now in VLAN 2, not VLAN 1, our local PC is not able to ping that device. That just shows you that VLANs do work. To make this work, we need to change the IP address of this device and default gateway so that it's configured with the correct details. In this example, we're using the 5406 as the router or default gateway of all the devices. So we need to configure the router with the correct IP addresses in the specific VLANs. Inter-VLAN routing has to be enabled on the 5406. So firstly, let's change the IP address and default gateway of this device, then put the port into VLAN 2 and configure the router with the correct IP addresses for the individual VLANs and enable inter-VLAN routing. So firstly, I'm going to put this interface back into VLAN 1 so that we can open up a VNC connection to the server. As you can see, the pings are now succeeding. I'm going to open up a VNC connection to 10.0.0.252. So we are now connected. Once again, IP config shows me that the IP address is 10.0.0.252. Open up control panel. Go to network connections. Right click on this network, go to the IP properties, and we're going to put this into VLAN 2. And in this case, I'm going to specify the default gateway as the 5406 acting as our router, but for VLAN 2. So this device is going to be 10.0.2.252, which is what we've configured over here. The default gateway of this device is going to be the router. So this router will not just have IP address 10.0.0.100 but also 10.0.2.100. Hence the IP address here. Now the VNC connection will break as soon as I save this configuration. So I've changed the IP address of that device 
I pings timeout once again because that IP address doesn't exist. So let me set up a continuous ping to 10.0.2.2.5.2. Still doesn't work. That doesn't work because we haven't set up inter-VLAN routing on this router yet. So on the 5406, type show run so we can see the config. You can see that VLAN 1 has IP address 10.0.0.100 and all interfaces are currently in VLAN 1. VLAN 2 has been created, but it hasn't got an IP address and no interfaces on VLAN 2. So let's type VLAN 2 untag a5 show run again so you can see now that port a5 is in VLAN 2 however we still need to configure an IP address on that VLAN on the router so this is going to be 2.100 with the relevant mask but it's still not working because we need to enable IP routing to enable inter VLAN routing. Another issue is we need to ensure that this device has its default gateway configured as the router. So on my local device, I'm going to go to network connections. I need to go to the IP addressing section. And notice the default gateway is set to the wrong IP address. It was actually set to the Cisco router. So let me change that to 100. Click OK. And let's see if it works. And as you can see there, it is now working. 